Hey guys, what's going on? This is your friendly neighborhood Mandy here, and this is going to be the third video on becoming a better programmer. So today we're going to talk about source code formatting and ending religious wars, making code understandable through white space, brace placement, and variable names. So what I mean by ending religious wars is, well, uh, most of the time people have their own, I guess, opinions on what they like, you know, what source code format is best. And to be uh, frank, I guess, you know, there's really not uh, a better way to do something over the other. So most of the time, uh, source code formatting is going to be a matter of personal opinion. And I would say to just not fight other people over, you know, this uh, style is better than this style or uh, that style is better than this style or whatever. Because in the end, it really doesn't make that large of a difference as long as you keep everything consistent. So, general considerations is you'll have to make many choices in be uh, between styles in your code. So, you're going to have to decide between you know, a lot of things like, do I want to have spaces uh, when using this structure, or do I want to have braces for this structure, etc., etc. And it doesn't matter what you do, as long as you keep everything consistent throughout your project. And I would say, uh, at the beginning of your project, decide like the style you want to use. So you don't have to go like in the middle of your project and be like, oh, I want to switch to this style, it's so much better, or have to you know, refactor the entire project you know, when you're near the end. So now let's move on to white space. For those of you that may not know, white spaces are uh, just spaces, new lines, and tabs, and generally just characters that are typed into your source code, but they don't show up as anything, they're just white space. So the only purpose of it is to make it more readable for the programmer, unless you're working with Haskell, which it actually does make a difference. So if the computer doesn't care how much white space you have for many languages, it'll compile the same. You now if you have five spaces or four spaces or whatever, uh, you know, unless of course you put the spaces in between, you know, letters and a keyword and stuff like that. So it plays an enormous role in code readability, and I would say it's the largest role in actually making code readable. Without white space, everything would be on the same line, and uh, you know nothing would really make sense. So you use it to group related statements and uh, things, and to keep letters and symbols from running together. So I'm going to jump out of my presentation here into a dummy class I made. Now a lot of the things I'm going to talk about in this are my personal preference, and of course you can do things differently, but... I guess I kind of want to just make this like just an example of just ways you can use white space. So this is written in Java and it's just a dummy class doesn't do anything. So it's called public class white space and I have a space between the class name and the brace. You can of course do this differently but it's I'd say convention to have the space here. And something I like to do is in classes have like uh, functions and variable declarations split up with three new lines. So up here we'd have all of our variable declarations. I just have a string called test var. Then I have three new lines. So one, two, three. Then a function, which is a constructor. Oh, that's not a constructor. Never mind. But a function called test. And then we go down here and we have three more new lines. Another function. Three more new lines. And then another function. Now the point of this is to prevent like the functions and everything from running together and to give the program some kind of structure. So if I were to take these out, you'll see everything starts running together and you know it gets harder to see where one function starts and where it ends, you know, and then where another one starts and ends, etc. etc. So you don't have to do this, but I like to. And if you choose to do it, you can use more or less spaces, uh, whatever you want. I choose three. So then when we get into our function, uh, in related statements, I like to have two spaces between them. So up here we would have, you know, setting variables equal to each other or equal to values. So we just have test var equals my string, then two spaces. And then we have a related uh, group of statements here. So we have a we declare a new string array called string array. And then we have a for loop, which manipulates this array or does other stuff. And all of this stuff would be related, so it's all together. Now, I wouldn't put uh, the, string away, uh, the string array right next to the for loop. One space is just for uh, between stuff, is just subsection of related things. So, of course, the for loop isn't directly related to this 
uh, I guess. And then we go down here at the end we have two more spaces and then other related statements that aren't necessarily related to this or this. So I like to use two spaces. You can use a different amount. doesn't matter as long as it's consistent. And then uh, something here that's just really nitty gritty. We have our keyword. I like to have a space between the keyword and the parentheses. You can leave it like this if you want, but it doesn't matter as long as it can, it's consistent. So then you have a print, uh, space between the parentheses and everything inside it, and then another space between the closing parentheses and everything inside it. You can change that, but I just ha like to have a, I like to have a lot of space in my program to prevent things from running together. And then in this enhanced for loop, I have space between the colon, the uh, this and this. You can change that however you like. And then in if statements, you know, this is the same as up here. We have the keyword, space, then parentheses, and there should be a space there. There we go. And of course, I would highly recommend you have spaces in between logical conditions so it doesn't blend together like this. And then also between your checks like this, so I wouldn't recommend this. I like having some space. Now, with the negation symbol here, uh, I usually don't have space, so I usually put it right next to the what I'm negating, but you can, of course, do things differently, as long as you keep it consistent. And then tabs. Tabs are, you know, I guess every programmer picks up how tabbing works really early, but here we have tabs here. So this function, uh, we have the beginning of this function here and then the end of the function here, and you just tab in to where something begins and ends. So for loop starts here, we make a new tab with everything in here, and we close it here, so we go back out, and I don't know if you can see it, but my text editor has lines going down here to the end, so that's really helpful. The if statement, tab out, tab, etc, etc. Now something a little different from, I guess, between these parentheses and these parentheses are there is, there is no space. Now uh, I guess you can say I keep it so functions, the parameters, they don't have a space in them, and as long as it's consistent, I tell I can tell the difference between a function and an if statement, because the function, it doesn't have the space between the function name, the parentheses, and another space, and this statement does. So I guess just a, it's just a little trick you can use to you know, look at your code and see, oh, this is a function, you know, it'll save you a little bit of brain power to you know, not have to actually look at it and be like, okay, this is a function, or this is an if statement. So jumping back into my presentation, let's move on to braces. Now braces and closed statements that are to be executed together. Now some of you may not know, but an if statement or a loop or whatever, they actually execute only the next line. Now the purpose of braces is the if statement or whatever, it executes the next line and it finds braces, which is basically a chunk of code, and it executes all that code together. Now, in some situations, you may not want to use braces, and I'm going to just demonstrate that with another dummy class called braces. So up here we have just a simple function, or constructor, and spaces between here, I guess, to be consistent with this class. Now, this if statement would be a multi-line statement, so if we have our if right here, and then many statements here, and then else many statements here, of course, this is necessary if you want to execute all these statements together and you don't want to have a crazy bug in your program that you can't find. But something that may be a little odd is I like to have, you know, take out the braces if I have single statements with an if statement. So I have an if statement here, some value, you know, and just a condition, and then we have a single statement here and no braces. Now what this does, if I'm looking at this and I don't see any braces, I can tell, oh, there's only a single statement being executed, and you know, I'll know that. And it you know it helps looking at it at a glance, as long as everything's consistent, of course. Now I would recommend if you have a really long line or something, that you do break it up into pieces. So if you have a really long line here and then you break it up down here, that you actually have the braces. I always recommend that if you have multi-line statements, even if you know it's still one statement, having the braces. And then, so if you have the braces here, I'd recommend having the braces here also, so it doesn't get confusing. So either you have the entire thing have braces, or there are no braces. Now another example I want to show you of just breaking things up. Uh, here we go. 
this is a project I'm working on, but it's kind of a real life example. It may not be the best code, but this is in PHP, and here I just have a statement to insert stuff into a database. Now, each parameter is broken up onto a new line. Now this prevents everything from jumbling together into a really long line, or even if I break it at every couple of statements, just you know, it gets still being jumbled together. I'd recommend doing this for things that have really long, uh, you know, parameters or many parameters. But that's up to you, of course. Even though it adds a lot of lines to the code, I guess it still keeps everything really, I guess, readable and consistent. Because we also have some functions in here that you know putting it all together will just start to run together and you won't be able to understand it so back into the presentation next up is variable naming now you always want to choose descriptive variable names never leave in a variable name such as just x y or temp it's okay to have those while you're in production it's like oh i can't really think of a good variable name at the moment but always make sure you change them, you know, as soon as you can, because it really helps in keeping the program readable. Now, even if, like, I say you have a coordinate system and you use x, y, and z, it would be beneficial to use like something like x chord or y chord or z chord instead of just x, y, or z, you know, and something like that. Just add description to the name. Now you don't want to make the name too long because then it really starts to get you know annoying to type and then just annoying to read. But try and choose a short variable name. You know abbreviations are fine. That actually describes what the variable does. And now something to consider is if you're uh, making a loop, it's kind of a convention to either use i, j, or c as the loop counter. Now for a very simple loop, I would say yeah, this is okay. But if you have a loop with a lot of statements in it, I would suggest actually changing this loop variable to something more descriptive. Of course, you know, it helps out with code readability and everything, but if you have just, even especially nested loops, like you have just, you know, I appearing everywhere, and it's like, it doesn't really, you don't really know what I means, so consider changing uh, loop variable counters to something more descriptive, even though, you know, it may be convention to leave it as IJ or C or something like that. Now, variable notation, you can have, there's many different notations out there, snake case, camel case, Hungarian, whatever. Uh, I'm going to let you look those up on your own. I'm sure you know there's a Wikipedia page on it with all the different notations, but it doesn't matter what you choose, really, as long as you keep it consistent. So I know that a lot of the notations are good out there, and to me, I've used a lot of different ones, so just, I guess, choose what you want to use at the start of your project, and go from there and, and then if your language or framework has established conventions you probably want to use them so say you're working with a code writer PHP framework it has established conventions already has an entire document on the thing you should probably just use those instead because they're most likely already well accepted in the community and you know if somebody inheriting your code will probably be like oh you know I see this and oh, I understand it because you know that's how code writer apps are written in and what they're supposed to look like. And let's say you know, you inherit code, uh, use the uh, the style already given to you. Don't go changing everything to your own personal style if you have a, a large program to work with. It's not really worth it to refactor the entire thing, you know, just to change it over to your style. You know, unless their style is horrible and you can't read it, but you know that shouldn't be the case. But just don't go changing things over just, you know, little issues and stuff like that. So finally, I'm going to talk about splitting up classes. So you want to put unrelated classes into different files. This helps keep a, an organization an organizational structure to your code instead of just having, you know, one file with all of your classes and all of your code that gets, you know, a couple hundred thousand lines long or whatever that gets really, really, really really hard to read and you know for classes if you have something like an action list or a handle you know that of course that it'll be a separate class that you have in that file that's you know probably okay you know if it's only going to be used in that file alone and it's basically the whole purpose is to work in that file in that class now I'd say if these things are getting you know massive couple thousand line of 
classes, putting it in a different file, you know, just to keep things readable, but that's up to you to decide what you want to do. So that's going to be all for today, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.